Greetings, ladies and managers, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called The Blink Drive, written by Farmwitch4275. It was a strange and massive contrast between the black and grey hulled warships of the Human Soul Confederacy and our golden hulled warships of the Eridian Empire. The stark contrast in size was more apparent than we could have ever imagined. Their largest warships, the SES Supernova, was a fifth of the size of one of our battleships. If I didn't already know the history of these ships, I would be laughing at how small they were. The larger ships were also the least heavily armed, ships known as carriers whose only visible weapons were point defense weapons. I looked over at one of the ships escorting the Terran fleet, the Grand Inquisitor. Our ship is six times the size of the five battleships that are escorting it. The human battleships are heavily armored like owls, bristling with cannons and other weaponry. I almost laughed as I thought of how someone took a shrink ray to humanity's war fleets after they were built. There was obviously something I was missing. Obviously. Humanity had survived the last seven invasions from the Council war fleets. Obviously. They had some advantages. I couldn't see it at all, though. Well, we would see soon enough. My High Lord incoming Seresani war fleet. Right, on schedule as they said. All ships to battle stations, shields to full front. Human warships, stay behind us and let us absorb the first volley. I commanded of our comms. Harris Squadron, copy that, falling back now, came the response. The voice of the comms was feminine and made us all shiver a bit. Oh, why the gods, why are human voices so enchanting? My ensign spoke out of turn as he readied our shields. I forgave this talk, though. No, oh, they are very enchanting. Their voices have this, uh, quality to them, and their females are so... I said, waving my hands in front of me to show the curves of a human female I saw on one of their stations. I allowed my crew a moment of levity as the tiny ships moved to the back lines in our formation. Perhaps that explains why this occurrence is happening. What is this for, the humans now? Invasion number eight? Probably is. Tight beam range on that starboard shield to 30 degrees. Port side shield to 34 degrees. As soon as the first video of humanity's greeting to the galaxy appeared, humanity hasn't had any peace. And, uh, just so you know, the images in that video were very much real. I said as I commanded orders. Port side 34, starboard 30, set. With my commands followed, everyone registered that last statement I made. To the galaxy, humanity was a symbol of cuteness or a symbol of fertility when they first appeared. To almost all species, humanity's robust reproductive system was capable of interbreeding with almost anyone with little interference. A benefit of most galactic species being mammals. Humans are also exotic being one of the only two omnivores on the galactic stage. Symmetrical faces, short stature and dense bone structure from a death world gave them an even greater mystique. Is it any wonder that there are so many empires one monopolize them in the easiest way available? Terrasani Warfleet transmitting in three, two, one. Engaged, comms officer announced to all ships. Charging main shields. Shields are too full. Do you remember our battle plan? The human admiral spoke over the comms. Of course I do. Absorb the impact from the main drives with our shields. Then keep you covered while you engage. Snap to it. They're about to fire, I barked. I watched with a bit of amusement as I saw the tiny warships disappear behind our fleet. My attention snapped back to the matter at hand as I saw blinding flashes of light erupt from in front of the enemy formation. Full blasts of type beam laser fire from spinal mounted cannon arrays designed to precisely focus an energy source to a fine pinpoint. The purpose was to focus energy on shield sources to a specific point in the hopes of overloading them. A cheap tactic, one that my engineers were able to quickly overcome. The blast lasted 30 seconds. It was fortuitous that our shield systems outclassed most in the galaxy. In terms of weapons, we were outclassed surely, but a strong defense is just as good as a strong offense. 
It's how we held our own during the start of our own solar empire. Last is ever, four ships disengaged due to overload. The Sunkist Alavi have lost engines. Ready main cannons to fire. Focus all efforts on flagship escorts. Ignore targets of opportunity. I repeat, focus all fire on flagship and dreadnought escorts only. I barked in the comms to all ships. Diverting energy from main cannon. Real shields are now offline. Secondary system shut down. Main reactor at full capacity. The chief engineer barked over the comms. This is the part that makes me nervous. I trust them, but uh, I can't help but feel a little uneasy at the fact that we have the fully armed warships of another species sitting behind us where we have no shields. We have no reason to fear them, after all, but still, I said, thinking aloud. Hi, my high lord, this is logistics. We have compiled the data sets you requested. Oh, hi, one. The comms chimed just as I felt another shudder from the main cannon charging up. Excellent. Send the navigation data to the human admiral. He was the one who asked for it. I don't know why, but it's part with the plan. Ready, capacitors, I barked and sat in my seat up for the upcoming jolt. Capacitors, charged and ready. All ships targeting completed. Guaranteed 100% hit rate with focus fire. They won't survive. Ensign spoke up as he read all the data being fed to him. Fire, I commanded. The ship angrily shuddered as the multi-gigawatt beam laser mounted and the ship's body whirred to life. Capacitors glared brightly within the tube deep inside the ship. A multi-focused array of laser emitters, mixed with an array of hundred meter thick lenses, focused the enemy into the tight, focused beam of energy. The laser that blinded us for a few seconds as the streak of God's light and fury shattered into darkness before us. Moments later, all of the 41 ships we aimed at were disabled. Ships and their power systems overloaded. They disengaged and left to the back of the formation. The ones who weren't so lucky either melted from the sheer assault or went nova due to reactor detonation. 41 ships are gone. We now have the numerical advantage. Full power to shields, I yelled out as I saw the enemy flagships charge up again. Shields of all power, angle deflection is at 32 port side, 29 starboard, the engineer barked. We braced for impact, and the beam of energy from the enemy warship hit us. Most ships just ignored it. I noticed outside my window, however, the human warships had appeared from behind us, and were using the light from the cannon attacks to sneak up alongside us. Their ships were casually burning fuel just next to us, close enough in some cases that you could actually see the scratches in the paint from the dock maintenance. What the hell are they doing? I said aloud as I saw the top antenna array of a cruiser appeared below the bridge window. This is SES Europa, navigation data received and processed. Charging blink drive, please maintain overshield. The human comms spoke up. Affirmative. Shield deflection port side 25, starboard 27. Keep those warships in their shields view of influence. I ordered as the attack dissipated. There's our exit point. All ships will burn. Ready broadside. The human warships barked in response. But what? Are they charging the enemy line? That's, that's suicide. It'll take them far too long to close that distance, I said, wondering what the hell they were thinking. Before I could voice my concerns, however... The human ships enveloped themselves in a wave of purple energy of some kind, and suddenly vanished. Mere microseconds later, they reappeared in the enemy battle line. I blinked, completely dumbfounded at the sight of what the void just happened. I grabbed a telescope. I had to take a close look at what was going on and saw a close view of a human warship unleashing a massive battery of ballistic cannon fire straight into the unshielded side of the enemy flagship. The human ships unleashed the full force of their arsenal straight into the side of the flagship, and then some kind of pods deployed shortly afterwards. They didn't look like escape pods, or at least nothing I'd ever seen before. Missiles as well. Thousands upon thousands of missiles blasted out of every human warship, and within seconds another 50 enemy ships had their engines blown away, disabling them and kicking them from the fight, if not outright destroying them completely. We're in. Don't fire on the flagship. I have men aboard. Damage is done. We are disengaging, the human admiral yelled through the comms. Suddenly, it made sense. Suddenly, I knew what they did. I ignored the how for now and focused on the objective. With our opponents further disabled, 
we now had the numerical and tactical advantage. This was something that so few empires have tried and failed to do. Humans had managed to successfully develop the tactics and strategy to board an enemy vessel and directly engage a fleet's leadership in abnormal conditions. This would change everything, and we, we were their allies. A sinister grin crept across my face. I got back to my senses and stood up at my station. Ready all cannons to fire. Fire at will at all targets of opportunity. Do not target the enemy flagship. Aye, my lord. All ships fire at will. Fire at will. Do not target enemy flagship. Watch for your crossfire. There are still allied warships in the enemy formation. The ensign barked into the comms as the ship's capacitors shuddered to life. The enemy formation is collapsing. Left flank on the enemy flagship is routing. The gunnery sergeant yelled back. Do not shoot at the retreating or disabled enemy ships. Maintain your fire only to disable enemy targets. Do not finish targets off, I ordered again, racing as the main cannon blasted out its godly fire. Three more enemy warships went silent just as we received an open comms. Play that message. Ready fire, I ordered as I felt the capacitors charge again. The screen appeared showing the enemy admiral on the bridge of his flagship with a human warrior aiming a gun at his head. This is the marine team of Echo Squad. Your precious admiral now has a gun to his head. I'd suggest that you disengage before I start pulling teeth. The statement took us all off guard. It did so to the enemy as well, and within a minute every ship the enemy had had the shields down and lights indicating surrender now lit up. Engines died as fast as the fleet gave up. Good dogs, the human said. Now, admiral... If you don't want to be turned into a rug for my barracks bathroom, I'd suggest that you fuck off back to where you came from and don't bother us ever again. Get it? The enemy admiral didn't even register and quickly screamed, We give up! No more! As he ordered his ships to disengage. Within moments, any remaining enemy ships that could move immediately walked out. With the enemy line broken, I commanded everyone to move ahead and start rescue operations. The humans had already started doing this long before we were even considered it, and some of their warships were using a foam of some kind to douse several fires while incursion teams rescued enemies trapped inside destroyed ships. By the time I even considered ordering any rescue attempts, the humans had already secured our own ships that had been damaged in the fight. With a moment of calm to deal with the casualties and damages, I called the human admiral. His image popped up on screen. Hello there, High Lord. Something you need? What in the holy void was that maneuver you pulled? I asked, still recovering from the shock. Blink strike. We use a blink drive to warp us into enemy formation, blow a hole in the side, and send in a marine team. Boom! Victory. We've done it every time, he said rather frankly. What the hell is a blink drive? I asked, now noticing the other members of the crew were listening. Well, uh, a blink drive is a hyperdrive, except instead of using the hyperlanes, it uses subspace to generate a warp bubble around a ship. The subspace bubble, as we know it, is unstable. That is why we use hyperlanes for long distance travel. If we use the blink drive in a very short distance, it can be used en masse. In short, a blink drive is a directionally mounted miniature subspace drive. It's called a blink drive, because if you blink, you miss it, he said with a smile. I blinked, coming to terms with the information I just got. Not only a stable form of subspace travel equipment that shouldn't interfere with gravity wells of local planets, but also it was safe to use on ships. I considered for a moment that if humanity were to stop being constantly at war, maybe they can better this tech for more... Uh, economical purposes. I stood still and at attention. Well, um, on behalf of the Iridium Imperium, I have a favor to ask regarding your blink drive technology in exchange for our continued and permanent alliance with the Soul Confederacy. Go on, he said, stroking his hair, covered chin. Can, uh, we get some of that shit? End of story. There is a new legend on the horizon. Blueberry Cat has taken the T6 Patreon spot. 
Thank you very much, and I am sure that I speak for everyone when I say that. I would just like to thank our T5 members, Lord Azrakal, Ambrose Cattell, Quantum Wednesday, Dregzoon WRE, Blueberry Cat, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Bushmaster 177, and Leslie 517. Thank you very much.